recently completed my second through hike on the Colorado Trail, and I just want to make a video here, try to keep it as quick as possible, on the gear I used and what worked for me on my second hike of the Colorado Trail. Through hiking it twice, I feel like I have a pretty good feel for what you need, what you don't need, and I just think my gear is pretty dialed. So I'm just gonna start with the kind of what's on the outside of my pack and into the inside. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Um, so we'll start with the pack. Superior Wilderness Designs 35 liter pack. I've had this thing for about 4,000 miles on the AT, the Arizona Trail, Tahoe Rim Trail, um, and then this hike on the Colorado Trail. And it's been absolutely fantastic. It's held up great. It's X pack, it doesn't wet out. Um, just can't say enough good things about this pack. So, so that's the pack, and I'll put all the weights of every item at the bottom. So, so you can see that too. I'll also put a link to my to my lighter pack. So let's get into it. Um, trekking pole. I hike with one pole. Um, if you hike without a trekking pole, at least one trekking pole, you're just a fool. I don't know what else to tell you. All right, let's see. Sit pad. Um, this is great to have. So doesn't weigh much. Um, I have another one I'm sitting on right now to make this video. This one is a little bit lighter, just to kind of cut up from uh, from one of the big like accordion style ones. So Garmin InReach Mini. Honestly, on a trail like the Colorado Trail, the AT, you can really get by without having one of these things. I know they're for emergencies, but um, God, I did going off trail, doing more mountains, doing going to some more remote areas um, I just thought it was wise to pick up one of these things and they really don't weigh much at all and you know it can save your life. So uh, water bottle on the side and then a water bottle up front right and I got this uh, water bottle pouch holder for it on the sh left shoulder strap which is great so two liter capacity for water which is totally fine water on water in the back kind of compartment here my water hydration system i've tried the catadine i've tried the mini just go with the big one you know it's worth the extra ounce or two and then i picked up this bag they always break this one just broke on me right at the end so the only reason i didn't throw it out yet is because i'm going to make this video but i do want to get one of those uh enoch or cnoc ones that fill up from the bottom this is kind of just a cheap one i picked up in a salida so gotta get rid of gotta get a new bag but this is the best system i really don't like filling it up straight from the bottle i think that's just a pain let's stick in the back here bandana with a safety pin and what that does is it keeps the sun keeps the sun off of your ears and the back of your neck I used, I used to use the buff, but I found that the buff just kind of like put too much pressure on my ears and it got a little bit uncomfortable. So I switched to one of these and I really, really liked it. So this, that's what I'll be using going forward. TP, usually just cut off a couple squares, uh, kind of depending on how long we're gonna be out between towns. Um, definitely have taken TP for pit toilets and things like that, just to kind of restock along the way. I don't like to carry a whole like roll like I know some other people do. All right. Oh, and this is absolutely essential gear. I like to keep it on the outside of my pack, uh, mainly because on the AT last year, I found that you come across trail magic so much that you just want to have it handy. You don't want to have to like dig like into your food pack to just get your spoon out. So that's why I like to keep it on the outside of my pack. I like to keep the gloves in this pocket here. That way hiking along and it starts to get cold or if it's the morning and I'm hiking along and it starts to warm up I can just put them away without having to take my pack off or I can put them on without having to take my pack off. So I, this side hip belt pocket I keep sunscreen. I've tried using the stick sunscreen which is a little bit denser and it's a little bit lighter but I kind of that is just such a pain to apply so I just went back to using cream sunscreens. Bug spray, I had a thing of deep, um, but I switched to this. I found that I just really wasn't using much bug spray. There are times in the Colorado Trail that can be really, really buggy. Um, Holy Cross Wilderness, Holy Mosquito Wilderness, I like to call it, can be pretty buggy. This pocket here, I usually keep my phone with an OtterBox. I'm using my phone to make this video right now. So it's just an iPhone 7. Up here, if you're doing big miles and long days, this is absolutely essential gear, headphones. More essential gear, especially for the Colorado Trail where it's dry 
and sunny is chapstick. Your lips can, will get absolutely cut up and it's good to have it somewhere very accessible so you can kind of get that instant relief from the chapstick. This pocket here I usually keep snacks but I'm not going to talk about food really today. All right and then that's everything on the outside of the pack so let's go to the inside and I'm just going to kind of go top down here to start pulling things out. This is um Appalachian Gear Company alpaca fleece hoodie. This is great. This is the only like warmth layer I have. And I did carry a puffy from Durango to Slida and I only really used it as a pillow. So I sent it home and this was fine for those cold mornings, cold evenings. Um, so I was totally fine with this. And this is great, it's hydrophobic. I just don't have enough good things to say about this. This is a little uh, first aid and repair kit. I'm not gonna go through every single item. Hiking in 2020 this year, you gotta carry one of these things. That's all I'm gonna say about that. A repair kit for my sleeping pad, which I'll get to later. Um, some Luco tape, some ibuprofen, some aquamira drops, just in case. Oh, then. One more thing I should mention here. Little uh, Swiss Army knife. Don't need a big knife. If you take a big knife, like I said, to check a pillow, you're just a fool. You don't need one. Um, this will do. I use it pretty much to open packages and cut my nails. And that's it. Let's see here, this is uh, my toiletries bag. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff in here, but just real quick. Um, some like hand cream, moisturizer. This can be good if you get chafing or sunburn or something. Hand sanitizer toothpaste, toothbrush cut in half, floss, and then just some anti-chafe. I didn't really end up using this too much. Chafing can be really miserable, so I want to have a, have a plan for that. Helium 2 rain jacket, another thing that you have to carry is rain gear. Uh, you can get hypothermic. If you go from being like 75 and warm in the sun and the storm moves in, and then you get hypothermic. So electronic, pencil headlamp, acting, I think it's called, but this thing's been great. I can night hike in it. I know there's lighter options you can do with a headlamp, but I like having the option to night hike. I also like that there's a rechargeable battery, um, USB cord. Uh, this is for my Garmin, so I never talked about it. I like to just kind of keep track of my miles. Uh, it doesn't need to be charged a lot when it's in GPS mode, but it doesn't take up that much battery. Like really hardly any compared to my phone, which is pretty amazing. So iPhone cable. This is a Qualcomm Quick Charge 10,000 milliamp hour anchor. It's like an ounce heavier than the non Quick Charge one, but you know it's worth it to be able to Quick Charge it. And it's really not that quick. It might take four or five hours to go from dead to full, but I guess it's better than nine or ten. So. And just two uh, wall outs. So a little one, and then this is the one you need to make a Quick Charge compatible. This kind of bigger one that sends you with the charger and just outdoor research drive bag i could probably get a z-pax one or something and go a little bit lighter but all right and then uh this is my food bag i use an ursac i know you can go lighter if you use your cuban fiber um bag but while weight is kind of one side of the equation i think simplicity is the other side and it's just so nice just to be able to tie this up and not have to worry about hanging not to worry and there's parts of the Colorado Trail where there's no trees so you're not gonna be able to hang anyway so this is a super simple and then inside I just have a um top sack and I found with these the seal on the top always breaks but I just kind of like peeled it off and I just kind of roll it down and I haven't had any problems with it and then no food in here, but I do eat cold soap and this uh, Talenti cup, so I know a lot of people eat that. So let's do my clothes bag. So I got a Z-Pack uh, stuff sack here. Alright, so extra pair of socks. Um, I usually just wear a pair, obviously, and then just kind of rotate the socks each day. And that kind of helps with the wear. And then if you do get a pair that really just kind of gets a ton of holes in it, then you at least you have another. Sleep shorts. These are like soft, they're really, really lightweight. Shirt or a town shirt. Honestly, I just sleep in this sometimes if it's not like too sweaty. Um, but it's good to have like another shirt for town or another shirt if this is, if your main hiking shirt gets wet when you go to sleep, something else to try to change it to. I carry these rain mitts. Honestly, the second through hike, I never use them. Um, but 
your hands, like if it rains and your hands get really chilled, that could be really, really bad. So I think it's worth it to carry these and they really don't weigh much. More rain gear. These are light heart gear rain, rain pants. Again, they don't weigh much. And honestly, I never use these for the rain on my second hike, but I did use them at camp a couple times uh, when the mosquitoes were bad. So another good reason to carry rain pants is to keep the bugs off. Then one more thing in here. This is kind of something for me specifically, but I've had a lot of problems with rolling my left ankle. So this is just uh, like an ankle sleeve. So I didn't really have any problems with it this year, but in the past, I've had a lot of problems with it. So um, I was just carry this thing just in case I have a roll and I need to give it some more support. So next is the Z-Pax Altiplex. So I did splurge on upgrading my tent. Um, I, my first year hiking the Cottage Trail, I carried a Sil Nylon tarp tent. And having used the nylon and then going to Cuban fiber, it is worth it. It's lighter, it's maybe, this is like 15 something ounces, and my tarp tent was like 26 or 27 ounces, but Cuban fiber is such a better material. It repels rain, whereas the nylon absorbs, absorbs water. I'm not gonna take it out, uh, I just do wanna talk about my um, trekking poles, or not my trekking poles, my tent stakes. And it had this little stuff sack from them from Z Packs. And this is a place I could go lighter. I have 10 in here. I'm not gonna go too crazy talking about each one, but some of these Z Packs ones, they will break, especially if you have like really firm ground you're trying to hammer rocks in. Um, so I kind of have like a ragtag group of 10 of uh, saying temples, 10 stakes. So I like these ones a lot. Uh, they might be a little bit heavier than for M the MSR Mini Groundhog. Um, they're really durable and pretty light. So I'm probably gonna pick up more of these. And then I have these for my tarp tent, and these ones are really good too. So I've tried to get more of these, but apparently I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't get them for tarp tent. So. These ones are really good, but the Z-Packs ones, uh, are, I do not recommend that you get those. So, but I can definitely save weight on these tent stakes, but it's a pain when they break. Okay, this is just a camp pillow. I know, probably don't need it, but sleep is really important, especially during big miles. Um, it has, has gotten a few holes in it that I've repaired. All right, and then this is the um, Thermarest Moonlight. And this thing, I know people on YouTube, other hikers have said it's not good. And this is actually my third one, believe it or not. Uh, but they do have a good warranty on it. My last one ended up getting this like huge like bulge in the middle and at least it's covered under warranty. Punctures are not covered under warranty, but you can repair punctures. Um, and I noticed that with this new one they sent me after my last one got the bulge, I think they did make some, well, they definitely made some improvements with it. I think the material might be a little bit tougher. They also changed the valve here. And it's been, I've had this out for maybe 10 nights so far, and it hasn't been leaky at all. It's just, it gives me a really, it stays firm throughout the night, which my old ones never did. Um, so I've been really liking this. And then these, um, I don't need these every night. These are, I think it might come in uh, down booties, but if it does get cold, uh, these are great to put on your feet at night to keep the chill off your feet. I've also had days, um, not on the Colorado, not this time on the Colorado Trail, but other trails, Arizona Trail, um, Top of Rim Trail, where uh, my feet got really wet and when it got cold in the evening, my feet were just soaked, and then it was so nice to be able to put take my wet socks off and then kind of dry my feet out and then put these on my feet. So I think these are really, really worth the weight. So the bag is a uh, Gossamer Gear, like Neo, I don't know, I'll put, I'll put it at the bottom. But, um, but just a pack liner. I like having a clear one. It's a little bit more durable than just like a trash bag. Uh, and this is actually a, a brand new one. I just, I just ordered a few ones. The last one I had did start to rip after, oh man, 
maybe two packs of primals, so so they will break eventually. And then I just have a Z Pax 20 degree bag. And this bag has probably 4,000 miles on it too. So it's probably more like a 30 degree bag, but at this point, but I think that's fine for Colorado Trail. I never had too many really, really cold nights out there. Um, so I thought it was fine for Colorado Trail in July. Last piece of gear, I guess I'm just gonna talk about the clothes that I'm, uh, that I have on right now. So this is pretty much what I hiked in. This shirt is a Columbia, Omni shade or something sure if the sleeves do roll up I just kind of prefer having them roll down to keep the sun off go to some sunglasses are essential gear hat is essential gear uh, these shorts I like the hiking shorts so these chili pepper shorts get a lot of compliments on them so I don't know I kind of like the, the eccentric of the shorts but these shorts are great kind of cheap from running warehouse but with good shorts let's talk about my watch the garmin 735 xc i know i mentioned it before but um i like to track my miles and i think the phoenix would be better because you get more um or one of the equivalents from one of the other brands because uh, you get more battery life but it does the job okay shoes so these are not the shoes i wore on the colorado trail i had the temps ultra temps and then the Ultra Superior 3.5, I just switched to another pair, that old pair that I had. Uh, the Tim's, the sidewall blew out after a lot of the kind of the off-trail alternates that I did. So I think if I just st stuck to more of the trail, they probably would have held up better. Um, but I was a little bit disappointed about that. And then Gators, one of the things I really like about the Ultra shoes is they have the Gator attachments already on them. These Gators, I can repair a little bit. Stance socks, and I think socks have to be crew length, um, just because uh, you don't have to worry about like blisters coming from your heel or anything like that. So, you know, I actually emulate like, pair of ultra shoes works. Um, I just use one pair of socks. Um, I th and don't get cheap socks, get like a $20 pair of socks. It's worth it. They always wear out, but um, you know, if, if you have problems with your feet, you're just gonna be miserable. So, so, oh, and then the last thing I have is just a wallet. I have debit card, um, ID, health insurance card, and I think like a Safeway card here. So sometimes I have cash, sometimes I don't. So 